So I'm really happy to be back for another Zoomcast. Today's Zoomcast is with Shakti Smith. I'm so happy to be with you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yes. Um, so Shakti is a dynamic embodiment therapist, um, yoga teacher, massage therapist, shamanic Reiki practitioner, and um, registered somatic movement therapist. And she's going to be speaking about us uh, about uh, chakra yoga, yoga today. And we're going to be seeing what else arises because there's a lot of wonderful tendrils uh, to explore. Um, but I'm thinking let's start maybe with a little bit of chimes, a little bit of sound healing to drop in together. How does that sound? Sounds wonderful. Love those chimes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Good, so welcome. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit about about your work, how you're doing, and, and sort of what's alive for you right now that you'd like to share about. Um, well, I'm so pleased to be asked to talk about the chakra yoga because that's a has a very special place in my life. Um, and uh, it's just gotten dark here on the East Coast. I'm in New York City in Brooklyn, and I've still got a little Christmas tree that I'm looking at over here. Um, we're a, a few weeks into January. Um, the, um, yeah, as far as what else is alive in me, um, sound healing, energy work, embodiment and whatever else it takes to help people during COVID um, be happier and calm our anxieties and realize that their life is still happening and we're in this for the, the long haul. It's not over yet. So how to be living now, not be waiting. Mm -hmm. And part of this, you know, I guess I find when people are, um, anxious and tending to get they're tending to get um a negative view of this time and it is an awful time and the that people are dying and uh, some of the things that are happening politically but it's also a time of fires burning and an opportunity for change which we're already seeing happen in the politics in our country change in all of our lives individually and this is this is cause for hope Mm -hmm. to be less anxious to celebrate and how do we enjoy some of that ah and i just my cat just <laughs> in my lap <laughs> folks will be <laughs> seeing whispers <laughs> uh -huh. his tail waving around every once in a while during, during this time yeah 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 thank you for naming that i really i really hear how um all the the aspects of the work that you do this this idea of promoting hope and and possibility and i also imagine that for for so many being in uh, such a difficult time that embodiment is is a challenge sometimes yeah and so having tools and practices to be able to get back in the body and do that in a safe way in a way that feels like it promotes connection not only to ourselves, but to others. Um, and even if that means we're doing it on Zoom, you know, for how, however long we need to do it, that, that there is a way to do that. 
Yeah, and offer offer these practices. Mm -hmm. Oh, very much so. And on Zoom, yes. And you know, I'm aware there's a lot of people in my life who don't really want to be on Zoom any more than they have to, or don't want to be on Zoom at all. And I very much experience the it's almost like a miracle the degree to which we can connect on Zoom, the degree to which we can feel nourished by actual connections with other people, whether they're friends or strangers we're meeting for the first time in a class. I mean, there's real, um, and of course, anyone who's who's on this Zoom cast <laughs> knows that <laughs> to a degree that there's real, there's real stuff happening here. There's energetic exchange and potential for healing and nourishment and joy. And yeah, this is very unexpected um, because part of what I do is teach movement and dance. And I know several teachers who weren't very interested in teaching on Zoom or thought it's not possible. And um, months have gone by and everyone's gotten on board and found their way to, to do that. And I think the energetic exchange that happens is what has surprised people the most. I can really feel you is how many of my friends have responded. Well, I can see you in your living room and I feel like I can feel you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't have to be isolated in my apartment in New York City and not see anybody for the next year. Uh, I can feel some connection with my computer. Who knew? Uh, we'll be deepening into this what what maybe we can think about as like the intuitive or energetic connections between people and deepening into our sensitivity some of us who are already sensitive to that and then also knowing that other people are deepening into theirs and you know maybe collectively we're all becoming more you know psychically and intuitively and energetically connected to each other which you know maybe one of the 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 side effects you know um uh, of this time definitely doing a lot of um, remote energy healing and, and the the way that it opens up the possibility of serving more people all around the planet yeah yeah and speaking of all around the planet you know it's like the the monthly global coherence pulse you know with heart math i was just yeah, sharing about that, and that was today, and just, you know, even seeing on the map all the little dots with everybody with our heart links that's practicing together, and just knowing that we're all kind of sending out these waves of heart coherence and love to everyone on the planet, just, yeah, and that we're doing it with, you know, online, and we're doing it with technology, and that there's a way that, that we can keep practicing, even if we're sheltering in place, yeah. Yeah, even if we're not in the same place. And then yeah. the other part of it is that we get to work with people we wouldn't have been able to work with before because they're people who in Russia or India or Egypt, <laughs> I'm, I don't think I ever would have met or have done, yeah, had connections with on Zoom. That's exactly yeah. right. And I, I have wondered how it's working for people who maybe where energy wasn't in there um, their way of thinking before or the reality of its existence. And I'm like wondering how that's changing or waking up for people. And I'm excited about that. Uh, I haven't talked with enough people yet. I haven't asked enough people questions. Like, you know, has that changed for you since before COVID by experiencing how you can feel the energy mm -hmm. coming into the screen? Mm. Yeah, that would be, it'd be interesting to find out if it's shifting for more people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and as I'm as I'm settling in, as we're talking about this, it's like I'm feeling um, the way that like your work and and the way that I've experienced your work in the past, whether it's meditation or through the podcast you did with with Heather, um, uh, the the Mystic Wisdom podcast. It was episode number six. Yeah, just in case people haven't heard that, I uh, just wanted to to give a shout out to that, that, um, that I was just also thinking about when you were saying like this, there's a way that the embodiment then allows for more openness. And I'm, I'm feeling that just as we're talking and as our energy is sort of mm -hmm. connecting. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to name that. 
Yeah, I think the the body the embodiment being in the body does allow for more openness because then we feel more secure and have a sense of being centered and knowing, you know, who one is and yeah, embodiment equals uh yeah, centered and self knowing and uh perhaps it rise in esteem and confidence. Mm. More open mm -hmm. heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, all those things. Let's have more of that. Yeah, and you know, um that reminds me too, you know, um when I was sort of letting sort of the the aspects of your work kind of flow into this this container as I was setting it up, I was also like wanting to hear more about um, your history with authentic movement. And maybe if you could share a little bit about about that and, and maybe uh, what it is for folks that don't know and then how that's infused in your work now also. Yep. Uh, authentic movement is um, just, it's a great deep love of mine, a form I have worked with, been with and visited and revisited uh, many times over the years. Um, easiest way to explain it is to imagine being with a group of, say, eight people or more and gathering in a circle. Um, and it's a very simple structure. It's very Zen. There's a lot of Buddhist aspect to it. You have the eight, eight people, the eight of you, and say in the beginning, four of the eight will move into the center of the circle and lie down, take a position of rest. And the four on the outside will stay on the edges and they are holding space for the people who are in the center. Um, and beforehand, the eight will hold space together and connect with the earth and the sky and the energies of one another. What's so profound and deep about this is that the people in the middle are going to be moving or dancing or whatever type of movement they feel like doing, but mostly with eyes closed. It's very introspective, um, interoception is what's happening. You're, um, you know, we're mostly, we, we have our eyes open all day in the world and we're very visual. Um, even if you're not a visual person by testing, we're all, you know, reading signs, reading each other's faces and bodies, um, the computer, we're very visually oriented. So take the visual, the outer visual way, close the eyes and there's a whole world here that you may not have been aware of before closing the eyes. And that's what we're working with in authentic movement. Um, and when you come into that interior world in authentic movement and become aware and uh, listen for impulses or notice for images, or are there sensations, physical sensations, itching or, uh, or desires to move, impulses to move in particular ways, these are the uh, aspects of awareness that are being cultivated. And in the beginning, it's a lot about you, the individual. But the more uh, someone practices authentic movement, you begin to become aware of the connections to the others that are also moving. And the people who are on the outside holding the circle are privileged to be witnessing the people with eyes closed who almost always are moving in relationship to one another in an obvious way that mm. they're not aware of because their eyes are closed. So the people mm. on the outside are getting to let the reality sink into their hearts and being that, wow, we're all connected. These folks have eyes closed and all four of them got up off the ground at the same time and three of them just leaned into the middle and bowed and mm. they're not conscious that they did that together. Mm -hmm. So there's all these other levels in which we relate that you get to become aware of an authentic movement. So it's very healing, it's fun, and it's an, a great way to cultivate awareness, self-awareness and awareness of, of uh, how connected we are and, mm. and compassion for others, how to witness someone else with compassion, how to lessen your own judgment and actually you know, come from an embodied place of compassion and holding space for another. Mm. Yeah, mm. Very rich, those are some of the are some of the pieces and gems, gems and pieces. Wow. Yeah, I love, I love hearing about that, the structure of it and the roles and some of the benefits. Um, I was really moved to when you were describing like the witnesses being able to see the, the structure inside of the movement of, of the people and the way that it interconnects. Um, 
And I imagine that on some level, even though they also have eyes closed on the inside, that there's some part of their body or maybe developmentally that is getting a healing from being witnessed in and of itself, that, that the body being witnessed. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm raising my hand. I feel like I'm borrowing this, you know, from Baptist church, you know, yes. Okay. You say, <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's about being seen. I mean, really, it's about being seen foremost. It's about being seen. And then when one is ready to see others, it's about seeing others. And then once one has been seen and is seeing others, then it, then it, then we grow to being able to see the ways in which we're connected. And the ways in which we're we're uh, we're we, we relate in the ways in which we're one, yeah, mm -hmm. very healing just to be seen, just mm -hmm. to be seen, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And often people will find that they have a particular quirky movement that happens. Say someone uh, devotes themselves, signs up to do an eight-week or ten-week circle of authentic movement. Within a couple of weeks, there's particular movements that will come out of individuals' bodies over and over again. And if people want to go into that, they can through writing and drawing. That's often a part of the practice or working with a therapist outside of the group or working with the people in the group to find out that that, that movement that keeps coming out often is related to a moment in childhood or something earlier in life that they may have forgotten about or not made the connection before. And because stories are in the body, they're in the body and in authentic movement, those stories start coming out. Wow. Wow. Wow, I'm feeling emotion arise as you say that. Yeah. Because it's like giving the body permission to tell the stories that it it needs to, to mm -hmm. to move the energy through and to, to be witnessed in the stories in another way. It's like wow, wow. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. sign me up, you know. Yeah, right. Almost it's emotional because emotions, you know, they when we don't express them, this is what happens. They get locked in the body. You know, and so there could be ones locked in there in, in each of us for a long time. Some could just be from yesterday. So you're doing authentic movement and sort of doing a little clearing, getting stuff moving out. But then there's there's layers and layers. And um, you know, and it's, oh, of course, you know, it's held in a very uh, respectful and safe environment and space. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Can you feel that? Yeah, and it also it reminds me of like how when you said the emotions are held in the body, it also reminds me of massage, right? That sometimes there's emotional release when we're working on a certain area. And I know we both studied at Lotus Palm in Montreal, so like having that connection oh, with like the, the breath. Yes, oh, yeah, I saw that on your on your bio, and I was like, maybe we could talk about that so with Oh my goodness! Oh. Yes. That's great. Oh. So that's really, really sweet. I love Thai massage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Thai mm. massage. Brings... With, the, with the breath. Yeah. Yeah. It brings breath. It brings spiritual practice together with meditation, with movement, with dance, with massage, with body work. Thai massage brings so many wonderful disciplines together in one discipline. And, and, it, and it, it's not like it was just invented. It's been around for a couple thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so powerful for the clearing too. Like even for me, I know I practice very yin style of Thai massage because at Wat Po, for example, I almost like threw up afterwards because it was so, and so young, so intense. Yeah. Yes, I haven't experienced that, but my teachers and my friends all tell me that you go for Thai massage in Thailand and it's similar to maybe a lot of Chinese aspects of healing and medicine that, that the belief is that it works if it's painful and here in the states it is very different yeah we have a lot of more yin gentle uh, spa like therapeutic lulling for the nervous system lulling for the human that lives in this part of the world different needs that's right yeah that's i'm not surprised right. to hear that you almost threw up at wapo <laughs> no, yeah. it was it was it was potent <laughs> yeah for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. But then, but then I did, you know, being on the beach and things like that. And then they would just put the sarong down on the sand and do Thai massage by the ocean with the sound of the waves. And so it's kind of it's kind of like doing Esl massage, you know, with the sound of the waves that that lulling that you're talking about. So both yes. of those modalities, it's like it can be really soothing and rocking for that like 
whether it's like if we think about like Stan Graf and the perinatal matrices, it's like being in the womb and like or the developmental phases and you know stuff like that. It feels like there's there's a way that breath and the heartbeat and the movements can all kind of like you said soothe the nervous system and we need that. So yeah. And the other aspect you're talking about with the the beach is the is nature. And yes. then evoking the rhythm of the ocean, that a Thai massage evokes that rhythm with its the lulling, how you move from side to side to side and repeat movements over and over again. And this again is doing, you know, what what happens with somatic experiencing. It's this regular rhythm that soothes the nervous system, soothes the vagus nerve. Um, mm-hmm. And that's an aspect that's in authentic movement as well. We sometimes mm-hmm. choose to do it outside. Mm-hmm. And then there's um there's the sky and the bird that flies by that becomes a part of the circle or the squirrel that wants to run in or the trees that are holding space with the people who are on the outside of the circle holding space Mm -hmm. so all other aspects come in connection with earth and sky yes yes and nature yeah and our connection our body's connection to nature and reclaiming that you know i really feel that the elements yeah this is amazing yeah yeah ah uh, and as we're as we're feeling into the elements and and i'm also like starting to feel the chakras i'm starting to feel oh, yeah, the, uh, the elements and i'm starting to feel like the the central channel and the energies move and so i'm wondering if we want to start sharing about that modality as well yes that yes practice. yeah and that's been I'm, I'm i have this delight on my face because i um started teaching a new class in chakra yoga about a year and a half ago and so it had been started maybe it's been two years actually before covid and um during covid a regular group came together and um just to do this practice every week it's um the way I teach it, we work with a different chakra. We work with one chakra in each class. So instead of um, a light taste of the whole chakra system, each time we're doing chakra yoga, uh, the participants are really, we're all together, me too, experiencing one aspect, one energetic aspect where it is in the body. And um, the feedback I've been receiving from people is how They've been trying, you know, other things for healing, you know, going to doctors, this and that, and going, oh my gosh, I actually think it's the chakra yoga class with Shakti that's lowered my cholesterol level, and my blood pressure, because I do, I'm doing it regularly every week. And, you know, we're working energetically, integrating it with the physical body, and that has a powerful effect um, on old conditions, like on the woman I'm thinking of. But also we that work with energetics know that, you know, disease enters the body through the field first. So if you're working consciously with something like chakra yoga, you're, you're clearing energy and balancing energy and learning to tune it yourself. It's great to go to healers um, or to be a healer working with others, but this is a way you can uh, be empowered to do your own energy work. Yes. Right, exactly. And then the practices I'm hearing like each week you're deepening into and building relationship with in all these ways with each chakra to be able to then kind of recognize how to work with it or what within the, you know, the offerings that that you, you know, present as a way to connect that then people can do that at home. It's an invitation for them to deepen their own practices with the chakras and that. I love the word empowerment that you said. Like I tell everybody in all my modalities, I'm like, my goal is to be out of work. <laughs> and like, you know, that like someday there'll be a way where everyone is healed, you know, and, you know, maybe that's a multi-lifetime journey <laughs> that we keep coming back for. But I love this. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you'd like to share a little bit of an example of how, how you would um, deepen into in, in uh, a session with a with a, a certain chakra and, and what that might be like for people. Just even if you wanted to describe a little bit about what what might you might present or show or how people would get to experience. Absolutely, um, and I'm just remarking, still thinking about uh, empowerment and. Uh, yeah. Just that, um, of course, it's you know it's healing to 
you work with someone and be seen by somebody or have space held for you by someone. And the deepest healing happens when both are doing the work together. And I, I think I learned that really profoundly when I was studying shamanic Reiki, the shaman who, who was teaching that course just emphasized it so much that the client needs to be involved and not have it done to them. And then it's really going to integrate and last. Mm -hmm. Um, and in, in chakra yoga, um, yeah, with, with, um, like for example, this, this round I'm, uh, with the current class I'm teaching, we did the second chakra last week. Um, so it's nice. It's seven chakras over seven weeks. And then some people drop out, some new people come in, you, people can drop in any time, but it's, I think it's become really fun for people to devote themselves to seven weeks and, uh, people start coming to class, like wearing the colors for the chakra as they get into different mm -hmm. aspects. Um, this round we brought in crystals for the first time, mm -hmm. which was really fun because I led a visualization for the root chakra. And it occurred to me all of a sudden to bring in a crystal below the earth for the chakra below our first chakra, our root chakra. And that image really resonated and woke up energy for a lot of people in the group. Mm -hmm. um, but typically we'll ground, we'll connect to the earth and we'll connect to the, the land where we live. Um, so really, you know, creating connection roots from, from your body into the earth's body to, to ground it now, because this is high vibration work, you know, and we need to really, we got to ground it so it can stay with us. Um, and then often a connection to the space, to the world around us, to, to trees, to the sky, to the stars. And then it's time to begin working with the chakras. Um, but we, we're doing physical asana too, which is also grounding. So sometimes mm -hmm. like some specific poses to help open up the chest, you know, reaching up or out or shoulder rolls. And if we're working with the heart, you know, let's get some physical movement and some blood flow and lymph flow in there to help support this light energetic work that we're going to be doing. Um, and typically once we've actually come into a chakra, we've grounded it below to the earth and to the first chakra, to the pelvic floor. Um, also, because like you at, at, at Wapho, if you don't ground chakra work and if you don't connect it to elements below, um, some people can get dizzy or faint or feel nauseous. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it has so much more power than people realize at first of affecting the body, especially when we yeah. get into upper chakras. But typically, you know, we're working with color, uh, the physical poses, breath, visualizing color because color balances, helps the chakra come into better balance. And then it and your body are going to be uh, doing the healing for you. When the body's more balanced, it does what it was trained to do, what it was made to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we work with yantra, sometimes mudra. Yantra mm -hmm. being the pictures, the the visual images that um, that the rishi saw many thousands of years ago in their mind's eye when they were meditating. Um, these images, uh, like color and sound, help balance the chakra. And then we work with tone, with sound. So there's layers that get uh, layered in for each mm -hmm. chakra over a, an hour class. And then we'll integrate with, with movement mm. to help it stay. It sounds so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. So it's it's all of the senses I'm getting, you know, as you're describing it. It's like the visual sense of the yantra and the, the images and the colors and, you know, and then it's the, the feeling sense and the proprioception in the body of like, okay, you know, for me, it's like today evidently I'm wearing more throat chakra colors, you know. I was like, I didn't even do that consciously. Purple throat third eye mood, I see. <laughs> and exactly, I was, exactly. I really was drawn to wear them, but I thought, oh, this is somehow about my third chakra because I really want those yellow earrings. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's something that, that. So that, that sounds really cool. learning about is the colors you're drawn to and the colors you're repelled by. Um, have something to do with the health of your body. Right. Um, and that, right. that's, that's really interesting when, when you work with it over time. Mm -hmm. it being mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm feeling into that too with the the background in biology. I'm thinking, okay, and mm -hmm. the connection to the the glands, the endocrine glands, right, with the chakra. So yeah, that's something that's something that we. I feel like there's a there's another the way that the energetics actually shift the physical body, right? Yeah. Mm. And, and in chakra yoga, that's one of the key things that maybe makes this a little different from other people who might teach this way is I have a background in body mind centering um, and dynamic embodiment. Um, these are practices with Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen and Dr. Martha Eddy. And so with each chakra, I'm grounding the work, I'm helping us ground the work through our physical body by working with the glands that go with the chakra. So if you're working with the third chakra, I'm just gonna I get up a little bit so people can see or bring my screen down the third chakra being right right here at the solar plexus right here this is actually the head of your pancreas is right here in the same exact place and wow. if and that and it goes back at a diagonal to the left side of your body it's shaped kind of like a fish and then if you go continue here at the back you've got your adrenal glands that are sitting on top of your kidneys um so those are some of the glands that you might work with at this area. And I'll mm -hmm. we'll work with energy points and that actual physical image, like the, the fish and help people palpate where they are and visualize where they are. And that helps ground this work and also tune into their electric energetic. That's the thing that has been, I mean, mind blowing for me. And I've been doing this for over 10 years. <laughs> Um, mm. but I'm still like, you know, you can tune into your ovaries or your adrenal mm -hmm. gland and you can feel this bright, electric, high vibrating energy that mm. um, is their activity. And mm. you can work with it and balance it with breath, with sound. So we do that with each chakra as well. Mm. And mm. you're making me think, what's the smell factor? Hmm, how can I <laughs> what's the essential oil for each chakra? That's a great idea. Yes, I know I have my rosemary, so I think that was, you know, I'm kind of doing the, the theme for myself for Throat and Third Eye, but yeah, it's interesting. That would be great. Yeah, bringing, bringing that. You said you just brought in crystals as well. and Yes, yeah, yeah to, to hold with while um, any class will meditate after doing the yantra and the om, it's really nice to just let people have some space in themselves to feel everything that's circulating and happening in the body and maybe hold just one element of that yantra. Or maybe it's the color. Um, you know, if it's the if it's the root chakra, we've got a square that's such a solid shape and there's a white elephant there with seven tusks, having energy mm. with seven chakras. So each person can notice which of those is uh, speaking to them the most. And when it's time to meditate, hold that one aspect in the mind's eye to let it do its healing. Let that image of the yantra that we know rishis and monks have found to be effective for, for many years, how can holding that in your mind's eye, maybe simply the color blue for the throat chakra, help you to feel more centered or balanced or healed in these moments? Mm -hmm. So it's really playing with these tools and trying them on for yourself. Mm. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah well, you get into, it gets into you into a spacious place. There's a lot of high vibration that happens in chakra yoga and creating space. I think glands give a, a feeling of spaciousness. Working with glands gives a, a spaciousness where mm. things maybe have been taught before t-a-u-t -T, taught wow. and, and you know anxiety can make us taught and i think western life where we have our eyes on the prize and the goals and getting to the end of the day has us taught moving forward so mm -hmm. chakra yoga working with the glands help us to be more present and central mm -hmm. in the body and finding mm -hmm. space within the body space within the cells of the body which helps the heart to open and and to be in the body. Yes, yes. And even in that that movement that you did when you were like this, and it was like, and you said pod, it's like, of course, I saw P-A-U-G-H-T, and I was like, what is the conditioning that we're taught that makes us feel like this, you know, in and like that and like forward? And then it's like, oh, then, and I was thinking adrenal glands, and then I'm like, 
open, back, down, centered. And then when the glands are all flowing and in balance and all the energies, then it's like, wow, then there's a different, it's a different embodiment. It's a different person in a way, isn't it? Yeah. And, and people feel more connected and that's part of the work is learning how to connect those interpene glands. Like when we work with a chakra, and you probably know this from all your work, like it can get kind of exaggerated from all the attention and the blowing open. So we're always careful in class to bring some of that energy up, some of the excess energy up and some of the excess energy down. So just bringing it up into the upper chakras, bringing it down to the lower chakras, bringing it from this gland, the heart bodies into the thymus and the thyroid, and letting it pour down into the adrenals, the pancreas and the ovaries. So everything's getting bathed. And then we're in that more truthful, truthful place, holism, the chakras work together as a system. Yes. The endocrine glands, science has found, didn't really know before, work together as a whole system, mm -hmm. and which is a great metaphor for social, political state of our culture in the world. You know, we all work mm -hmm. together to make things happen. Things work better mm -hmm. when everyone's involved. And everyone is mm. empowered and everybody matters. Yes, I love that. I love that you're making that connection to the collective because we can kind of loop it back to what we were saying about in different places and maybe different places on the planet or in different cultures or different sort of contexts, different things are needed for balance. And, you know, in a way, it's almost like certain chakras are out of balance in certain, you know, certain ways in different places. And, you know, we're kind of, bringing things back into balance in, in this country and soothing the nervous system, soothing the, and feeling rooted and feeling safe and, you know, um, and kind of okay. dissipating the power dynamic maybe to be more balanced with everything getting heard and, you know, in communication. Oh, yeah. And that in different cultures, it may be different chakras that need to be worked with, or maybe the same chakras need to be worked with in different ways, like how Thai massage is different in, Thailand than it is in the States and Canada um, to, to not be so self-centric, ethnocentric as to think that this way of working with the third chakra is the right way for everywhere. Um, that's, and that just kind of opens me up, opens all of us up to um, just more possibilities too. And also learning from others. I don't know why that's coming in, but I'm flashing on adrenals in Japan mm. because I often talk about body wraps in class. Um, one thing to help those adrenals calm is to put your hands on the back or to tie a scarf around your middle. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something we learned from Japan where it's more, I have to go one day, but my understanding is it's more normal there to support the endocrine system. You can buy uh, many kinds of products to put on your back to mm -hmm. warm the adrenals and the kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, they, I, my impression is you can just buy them at the drugstore there. Um, adrenal wraps, kidney warmers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's beautiful. I do love that when we're tuning into some of these other ways of understanding the body and you know the the ways to balance it, we're also like leaning into that that sort of. Um, nature, whether it comes originally from Taoism or if it comes from shamanism, which kind of, I think Taoism is a form of shamanism, you know, in a way, that there's that there's a way that, like, you bring that as well. I mean, we're talking about the, the trees kind of in council and, like, the heaven from the earth. And, you know, I was really feeling the shamanic elements to your work as well. Yes, I, yeah. it's it's It feels like everything's shamanic <laughs> once you start talking. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the shamanic elements have become more overtly a part of my work in the past 10 years. And um, when I move outside with my authentic movement peer group, it's become very apparent to us that our authentic movement practice is shamanic and that the trees are talking to us and holding space mm -hmm. with us when, and, and are happy to see us when we haven't been there for a while and come back and mm -hmm. um, yeah. things that happen in nature while we're in circle together you you feel that the field gets thicker you, you feel that the connection the golden web of life becomes more and more obvious mm -hmm. yeah, and present. yeah yeah 
Mm. Yeah, and that that connection with earth and sky, yeah, very important in all these practices and embodiment in mm -hmm. chakra yoga and, mm -hmm. and shamanism, of course, mm -hmm. healing work of any kind. Yes. Mm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, this feels really, yeah, really uh, nourishing and holding to, to be sharing about all this with you today. It does. Yeah, you've got so many things percolating. I'm like, what's going on with the chakra system of our country right now? What's going on with the chakra system of Washington, D.C.? <laughs> right, exactly. But I think in general, it's, uh, you know, nourishment is needed and calming tools and empowerment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole world, the whole country is more interested right now in all this kind of work. I mean, on NPR, there's a meditation moment every every day now. Mm -hmm. A meditation minute, I think they call it. I don't know if you've heard that. You know, it's just the, the, the lingo, the language is becoming used more and more in the New York Times. I mean, I'm, I am New York centric, I'm in New York, but that's the national newspaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are opening up to um, to the energetic um, and to different, you know, understandings of, of metaphysics and the possibilities of connecting, you know, um, and that feels really supportive to this next phase of evolution that we're bridging towards and in right now. And yeah, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. good. We're in, we're in it, right? It's the age of Aquarius. We're now in it. Like, yeah, yeah, we're like moving, <laughs> moving through into a new, a new way of being. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Well, good. I just want to say so many thank yous to you, and just, uh, just so glad to be together today, and and kind of swim in these waters together, and explore these different modalities, and. Um, yeah, so I, I would love to, you know, um, sort of close out if there's if there's anything else that you wanted to share or let people know about. I'll also be putting in the, the bio, I'll be including your website. Um, but if you'd like to, to share anything else about your work that um, that you want people to know about. Sure. And it's just it's so much fun to be making all these connections and very rich. And the only thing that we haven't touched upon, a couple things actually, is I also offer something called medicine dance. So mm. that's bringing a lot of what we've talked about already together with movement and dance specifically. And this, unlike the authentic movement, which is done in silence, and uh, unless you're outside done deliciously with the sounds of nature that happen to be happening, medicine dance is practices in body-mind centering, meditation, chakras, somatic experiencing all as the warm up for yourself and your body, good learning, uh, warming up to a place where for the second half of class, I put on music and people get to move and dance and express, uh, always with some connection to earth and indigenous earth-based practices at the beginning, indigenous, mm. uh, thus it's medicine dance. So there's that, mm. and I have an upcoming book that is uh, a lot of chakra yoga is in it. It's going to be called, most likely the title is gonna be a dynamic, uh, gosh, it's been through so many titles, Dynamic Embodiment of the Sun Salutation. And it's a book mm -hmm. about somatics, yoga, the chakras and the endocrine system. And this is, the woman I'm writing it with really is a world expert. And this book, if people's interests are, are piqued at all, it's really gonna be a handbook for information on. What is each gland about? What does it do? How do you work with it? What are the energy points? How does it relate to the chakra? How does it relate to a yoga pose? How do I use movement to be healthy? Mm. Uh, mm. That's so I exciting. <laughs> mm. Yeah, what, what an endeavor, what, a, what an offering to have all of that Kind of like collated and as a resource for, for people. I, do, I definitely know I'm going to get it when it's available because um, it's, yeah, very, it sounds very, very informative and so helpful to deepen into our, our practices and understanding of our own bodies and, and the way that these practices can support us. So thank you for doing that work and all the hard work that goes into yes. to writing and creating. 
Yeah, that needs to be in the world. I think it is going to help a lot of people. Um, I've been so in it for many years now that it, it's it's uh, don't come out so much, but I'm coming out. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a great. It's going to be a great resource for people. It's really going to help a lot of people, and I'm going to enjoy reading it and rereading it again myself. Yeah. So. Yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that. Yes. Yeah. So chakra yoga, medicine, dance, the book, this is all, yeah, there's a lot that's, that's available. And yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for your questions and your interest and in being able to have a, a rich conversation. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy to, to be able to, to share and, and get to share on a wider level with with you know my my people too that then they can know about you and know about your offerings so that, that we can all all be working together right this this collaboration co-creation sort of template that's coming in i feel like that's this mutual upliftment that's that's one of the intentions so i'm so glad that, that we got to do that today and it's a medical wisdom coming up and out to everybody from brooklyn and new york city yes <laughs> Awesome. Yes. And we're, you know, we have this, this lovely tendril across the country. We're just sending love yes, <laughs> from coast to coast. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thank here. you so much. Sure. So I was just going to say, I'm here next to a, a rare pocket of land in the city that is uh, 480 acres of uh, three bodies of water and trees and uh, anchoring these, these gems. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I'm here next to Mount Tamalpais and being able to kind of connect to the mountain and the beach and yeah, so up in Marin, just all the, all the sweet energies up here and yeah, anchoring, anchoring all this for us too. Love that mountain. And from ocean yeah. to ocean, from Pacific yep. to Atlantic. Atlantic to Pacific. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Ah, thank you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so good. So good to connect and yeah, many blessings. Many blessings on you. Thank you. <laughs>